What's up developers, it's Dari here and I hope you're having a great day since we're going to focus on fonts, colors and alignment in Tailwind. Before we continue on, I want to quickly let you know that you can support the channel through Patreon where you can get access to my private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with their coding issues. If you are interested to join, the link is in the description down below. In web design, typography is a very important subject since you're going to display text to a reader. Now in order to showcase you how you can play around with font sizes, we obviously need an index.html file. So inside the root of our directory, let's create a new file called index.html. Now in here, we need our HTML template, so let's write down doc and hit tab. Alright. Now first of all, we need to link our style sheets from the CSS folder. So right below our title, let's create a link, and the href is css forward slash style dot css. Now the next thing that we need to do is to create a div inside our body with some text inside of it. So let's create a div. Inside the div, we have another div. And inside the second div, we're going to style an h1 with the text of welcome to my Tailwind course. Uh, let me actually align it on the line below so it's easier to read for you guys. Right below my h1, I want to create a subtitle of a h2, which says create it by code with Dari. Right below our h2, let's create a paragraph of lorem ipsum. If we save it, right click on index.html, reveal it in the finder, and let's right click on index.html and let's open it with a browser. It really doesn't matter which one you use, I prefer to use Brave. Brave one to access my files, let's allow it, and let's make it full screen. And let me actually zoom in a little bit, all right. By default, you can see that the font family has been changed in a regular index.html file. There are three classes that you could use to control the font family of an element. And what I want to do is to add each of them to our headers and paragraph tags. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. For our h1, let's give it a class name of font-sense. For our h2, I want to apply a new class of font dash serif, which is the serif font. And for a paragraph, I want to create a new class as well called font dash mono. If we save it and go back to the browser, refresh it, you can see that we have three different fonts for our text. Our welcome to my Tailwind course has been changed to sans. Our created by code with Dari has been changed to serif. And our paragraph has been changed to mono. If we take a look at the classes that we added, you can see a pattern that you'll see throughout the entire course. The first word of the class defines what we're going to do. As you can see, we're going to do something with our font. After the dash, you'll be adding a specific value that is related to the font. So saints, serif, mono, and so on. So what I like to do right now is to remove all the classes because it's not necessary. It was just to showcase you what type of fonts we do have. The next topic is the size of a font. And for that, I would like to go to the official documentations of Tailwind. So let's open a new tab and let's go to tailwindcss.com. To be honest, this site is incredible. If you'd like to search up something that you don't know, you can just click on the search bar inside the top menu. Search for, let's say, font. Inside the drop down menu, you can see all the different documentations on font classes. The one that we need is called the font size. Now, right here, you can see a table with a class and a property. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. On the left hand side of the table that appeared, you can see the class name that you can apply on your HTML tags. On the right hand side, you'll be seeing the properties that are defined within the class. The class with the lowest font size is text-xs, which stands for extra small. The highest is, well let's scroll down, text-9xl, which is 9 times extra large. As you can see, there is a text-base. This is the default text size that you're going to use. So for our h1, let's say that we want to apply text-3xl which will define the CSS properties of font size, which will be equal to 1.875 rem and a line height of 2.25. That means that the font size will be 1.875 times 
bigger than the default font size of our root element. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's give it a class of text-3xl. Save it, refresh the browser, and as you can see, Welcome to my Tailwind course has been printed out a way bigger than it was. Now for our H2, let's add a class of text-extra-large, save it, go back to the browser, refresh it, and it got a little bit bigger since it has been multiplied by 1.25. Now for our paragraph, let's give it a class of text LG, which stands for large. So let's save it, go back to the browser, refresh it, and you can see that it got a little bit bigger. Now you might wonder why every font size has line height defined, since the goal is to make your text bigger. And the answer is very simple. It has been created to keep the spacing consistent throughout your application. Besides the font size, you can also format the text by changing the thickness. You can add utility classes to format the text by changing the text to italic or add or remove an underline. So let's do that. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. For our H1, let's give it a class of font-bold. For our H2, let's give it a class of underline. Save it. Go back to Brave. Refresh it and you can see that our H1 is bold and we added an underline for our subtitle. Now there's one more left, which is italic, and let's add that to our paragraph. So let's say italic, save it, go to brave, refresh it, and our paragraph has been changed to italic. There's also a utility class called not-italic to make something, well, obviously not italic. So what we could do is to go to Visual Studio Code and let's wrap this word right here into a span. So at the beginning, let's add a span. Let's copy the words and place it in between. And let's give a class to our span called not-italic. If we save it and go back to the browser, refresh it, you can see that consecutor is not italic, but the rest of the sentence is. Now besides the font-bold that we added in our H1, we could use one of the nine CSS provided grades of boldness. If we go back to the official website of Tailwind, write down font weight, open the first link that we get, you can see the nine different font weights that we could use. The default one is font-normal, which has a font weight of 400. Now the smallest one is font-tin, which is a font weight of 100. And the highest is font-black, which has the highest font weight of 900. If we navigate to our Visual Studio Code, change font-bold to font-black, save it, go back to our local host, refresh it, and you can see that Welcome to My Tailwind course is a little bit thicker than it was before. Let's say that we want to add font-tin for our paragraph. Let's do that. Right after italic, let's say font-tin. Save it. Go back to Brave. Refresh our local host, and you can see that the paragraph is extremely thin right now. There are also four different Tailwind utility classes to change the case type of a specific font. Now let's say that you want to set your h1 to uppercase and you want your h2 to be lowercase. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, we could add a new class to our h1 called uppercase. And for our h2, let's give it a class of lowercase. Save it, go to Brave, refresh it. Every single character in our h1 has been transferred to an uppercase. And inside our H2, every single character has been transferred to a lowercase. Even the C that we added as a capital inside our Visual Studio Code, as you can see right here. It's also possible to capitalize all the first letters of our word. And inside our paragraph, let's add capitalize. Save it, go to Brave, refresh it. And as you can see, every first letter of a new word has been capitalized. Now the last one, which is the default one, is called, well, let's replace our H1 to normal-case. Save it, go back to Brave, and it's been printed out just as it was in our Visual Studio Code. 
Now that we've talked about all the different font utility classes, it's time to talk about the text color utility. If we go back to the browser and search for text color inside Tailwind CSS, you'll be finding a total of 90 color utilities that you could use inside this list. I want to start off by talking about the first four on the list. The first one is called text-transparent, which will obviously make the text transparent. This is pretty cool to use whenever you have a background image and you want to see the background color through the text. But this is something that we will add later on. The text current will keep the current color that you have added. Now the third one is text-black, which will change the color to the hex code of 000000. 000 000 000 000. And the fourth one is text-white, which will change it to the FF, FF, FF color. If we scroll through the list, you can see a total of eight different colors. We got blue, gray, green, indigo, pink, purple, red, and yellow. If we look at the class names, you can see that every class starts with the word text, which implies that we're going to do something with the fonts. Then the second word is the color. So yellow, green, we got blue right here, and that was the last, oh no, that was not the last one. We got indigo, and so on. Now the last value inside the class name is the level of your color. The lightest level starts at 50, as you can see right here. And if you scroll down, you can see that the highest value is 900, which will be the darkest point of your color. Let's test it out. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And in our H1, let's change the color to text-blue-700. Save it. Go back to Brave. Refresh it. And you can see that our color has been changed to blue. Now for our H2, let's add a color of text-green-200, which will be very light. Let me show it to you. All right. And for our paragraph, let's change the color to text dash gray dash let's say 600. Save it, refresh the browser. You can see that the color is a little bit lighter. The last topic that I want to discuss in this video is text alignment, since it is something I personally use a lot when using vanilla CSS for text. By default, text is aligned to the left, as you could see. But there might be cases where you want to align your text in the middle or to the right. And in order to do that, let's go back to Tailwind. Let's search for text alignment. And as you can see, there are four values, text-left, text-center, text-right, and justify. So let's test them out. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. Let's change our H1 to text-center. Save it. Go back to the browser. Refresh it. And you can see that our H1 has been placed in the middle. Now for our H2, let's place it to the right. Save it, refresh it, and our H2 has been placed to the right side, which does not make sense, but you get the point. And the last one is text justify. Let's apply that to our paragraph. Let's say text dash justify. Now what this will do is basically inline the paragraph to the left and right edges inside the paragraph. This was it for this video. In the next video, we're going to focus on everything you need to know for backgrounds. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.